James Ryder, and I represent our family that owns a piece of property, we've been a piece of property for many uh, generations, in Brooks County, uh, Spain Lane. My name is James, J-A-M-E-S, R-Y-D-E-R, like the truck one. Back in December, I sent out a survey to the fellow Brooks Counties about the pipeline, asking a couple of simple questions. One of the questions was, do you know about this uh, pipeline that's coming through? Right? And most of the answers were yes. They heard rumors about it. Yeah, the next question was, do you want this pipeline to come through your county? And then overwhelming, almost 100% said no. So the overwhelming opinion of Brooks County, of those who have responded, is, uh, is absolutely uh, no, we do not want this uh, to come through our county. Many reasons for this. Number one, back 55 years ago, our, my uh, father-in-law and many other people from Brooks County set in on meetings, probably just like this, in which some had uh, forced through a pipeline through Brooks County. Right? Fortunately, we haven't had very many uh, incidents. We're lucky. But at the same time, that um, pipeline has had a major impact on many of the properties within Brooks County. You cannot find, you cannot plan, plant, excuse me, you cannot uh, plant a pine tree on top of the gas line. That means that revenue has been taken out by people who are forestry. You cannot plant pecan trees or peach trees or any tree that has a root on it in that acreage. That may seem uh, very minimal, but it is a source of a income to people who, are, who is majorly a farming community. It has a deep impact. The second thing is, on that impact, is this pipeline is going down a corridor right by the Sunnet pipeline. Many of the people who are involved here uh, in this uh, pipeline going down there have already been had their property impacted by a third by selling it because they cannot sell it uh, off as, as well as the next person who has no encumbrance. Or, you know, they, they have been deeply impacted by it. The question is, why can't this pipeline, why can't the wealth be shared with some of the other people around us and route this pipeline further to the west or further to the east and allow other people whose uh, lands have not been impacted by this be able to uh, share the wealth here, uh, rather than just continue to take away from the few, because you can. I've heard the argument that says that, well, we're doing this, we're putting this down through this car, because there's already an existing pipeline there. Well, 55 years ago, our forefathers said, we don't want this pipeline here, but in the domain, because of the threat of it, forced them to take a pipeline through. I don't know what the answer is, but I wish that, uh, like many of the books I wish this was somewhere other than here on that part. I've got a couple of questions on here. Is it true right, that the pipeline cannot be laid in the same order in, within a, and what is the distance that is necessary for the pipeline to be away from the Sunnet gas line? I mean, you can plant, you can plant the pipeline 46 inches or five feet underground, under a road, under a crop field, or anything else like that, but you can't put it within five feet of an existing pipeline. Why not? Right? That would be a minimum impact. But the Little Trails is not looking at minimum impact. Is it? We have uh, proposed a couple of my proposals to Little Trails about going around certain uh, in places. And I've also uh, made on record to the first uh, about those uh, suggestions. I won't go over them at this moment. I will, I do have a printout, and I will give that to you a little bit later. Um, the thing is, when, they, when you can um, commit to this pipeline, if you do, then it should be a minimum of an impact both environmental and economical to those people that are around. Rather than running through fields directly, it should run somewhere along property lines, 
wherever possible, especially if they are major property owners, right, where, where it is economical feasible. Another question for you. In your brochure that you uh, sent out to us, you had a statement of an uh, intervener, I guess it was, definition. Uh, at the end of the meeting, I'd like you to address that a little bit and tell what, it, what that is and how to become one and why it's important. As I asked uh, and have been told, <coughs> Sable Trail says that some of the routing that they cannot do is because they have to stay within a quarter of a mile of the current quarter. Is that true? Or is that just something that uh, we're being told? Absolutely reject this entire pipeline because America right now is fighting for its resources and they need to stay at home in the political state. Next thing, in your slide summary, you, uh, you had a, a presentation. I noticed that you specifically left out <coughs> on your slide that you're considering <laughs> the impact on property equal. Property values, tourism, and recreational resources. If you let that out of your slide, are you still considering that? You need to take your uh, consideration of the pipeline. Other, also, the impacts on um, land use, as I have said. And when they put a pipeline to our area, and we have significant wetlands that we have to deal with, a natural, a natural spring, we have natural ponds, we even have a Sinkhole, what would appear to be a sinkhole that is open to the aquifer in our area. We are very long, kind of long to the creek. Going through there will absolutely disturb all of that wetland. Even if it's just mining. So I ask you to take into consideration the impact that it has on our uh, piece of real estate, but also on the other real estate within uh, Brooks County there. Everybody there is impacted by, you know, from what they can do to the future value of the property. Where they will no longer put a profit, uh, as one gentleman has back here. If a gas pipe goes, another gas pipe goes to his property, the property will be valued greatly. There's nobody here in this room that will dispute that fact. Unless you're the one who wants to put that gas line through. Going back to my political statement agenda. Eminent domain here. 1955, or about 55 years ago, I'm sorry. Here, five years ago, when Sunday put their uh, pipeline through Brooks County, eminent domain was a prominent aspect. Eminent domain comes from the Fifth Amendment, as you're all aware. And which says that, yes, the government does have the right for, you know, the public, for public good to eminent domain. They also say that you, they will justly compensate the people for that eminent domain right. That is a noble cause in many cases. But here we have a company that is saying that we're going to supply gas to a major uh, company down in Florida, Florida Gas and Power, for future references. That's a good. Why do we have the uh, citrus? 
County link name. Is that the uh, Florida Gas and Power link? I don't think so. I think there's another motive here that goes beyond just the putting in the gas line for Florida Power. And which, being a capitalist myself, you know, I believe in making a good profit. You know, but here, we are, through the use of eminent domain, the potential of eminent domain, you have the possibility of taking and rough-shiding, rough-riding over uh, people in a rural area and turning around and taking their land because it's an eminent domain. They don't have any choice. They can only you know, go so far as to say, how much are we willing to stop and wait to you know, put that value up. What is the value of all the property? I right. can't change the data. But here they are going to make profit for one year. <coughs> uh, a very small portion of it. And they can only consider today's value, not future values. Whereas Sable Trails and the other companies that are involved here will be making profits for many years to come. And this should be addressed or we thought of in the uh, in your consideration. Now I have created a website and anyone who wants to um, give me after the program can do so and we'll talk about that. But the problem is that this particular project should be moved away from where it is, out of where it is, because it is still impacting those few people that are, you know, have already been impacted by a pipeline 55 years ago through in that domain. And they are now, again, let's say, here we go again. Here comes this pipeline. And we can do what? Go to the court system, which is very costly. We can go to our people, our government officials. Well, they've already basically proved this thing. The environment, you know, you still have to say whether or not you're going to prove it today. Be realistic. You know, you, it's going to be approved, unfortunately. But like I say, it should be moved because it's going to impact those same people who have already paid in fact, Let's move it. Or at least make another part of it. And, you know, some way. Get away from it. <coughs> oh, yeah, personally, from my family. You are in the middle of it. I mean, anything else? Well, I'll ask these questions. I'll ask these questions in the answer. Yeah, I'll get to your intervener question once I've got through everyone. Sure. Anyone object to me going on for a few more minutes? I have one more person signed up after you. Okay. Um, uh, it's a Mr. or Miss Case. I'll make it brief. No comment in I'll make it ready. Okay, well then go on. Our, big, our okay. biggest complaint in our area is that it doesn't take consideration <laughs> of property values okay. itself currently, and it doesn't take consideration of wetlands or anything else that are in there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Hastings, did you want to come up still? Okay. Um, I've gone through everyone who signed up. Um, if, is there anyone else you'd like to come up and, and orally comment? I see a hand raised. Come on up. <laughs> 